The crystal clear waters of Jamaica contain one of the most exotic sites of the Caribbean, the spectacular coral reef. The reef is not only a visual wonder, it functions as an important ecosystem as well. It provides biodiversity and protects the coastline from erosion. It also provides jobs and tourism. But decades of human activity have steadily been destroying the coral coverage. And threats to coral will likely increase because of climate change and high levels of acid in the oceans. However, there is hope. Correspondent John Holman traveled to Jamaica and met a group of fishermen turned conservationists who have made it their mission to revitalize the reef. Jamaica, its images painted in this picture postcard of sea and sand. But it's what's happening beneath the water that could shape the future of this island. The building blocks for all coastal life are the coral reefs, providing a habitat for fish, protecting the coastline from hurricanes, and stopping beaches from being swept away. But the reefs are being destroyed damaged by overfishing, tourism and pollution. Just a fraction, 8% of Jamaica's original coral cover remains. What you look down and you see as sort of a burned out brownie green reef, that's the color of the algae in some of the corals. Historically, that would have been gold. When you looked at it from the surface, you would have seen gold. And that's the sort of thing we're trying to get back to. When we first go in the water and we put the things on the bottom... Marine biologist Andrew Ross is using a new method to try to bring back Jamaica's coral. He and his team call themselves coral gardeners, growing it in special underwater nurseries. Once the corals are ready, they plant them on the reef piece by piece, 50 each trip, a drop in the ocean given the mammoth task. To survive, the coral needs abundant fish. They eat the creatures which damage the reef, which is why the backing of Orocavessa's fishermen is crucial. Murray and Stone are on patrol. They turned from fishermen to guardians of the ocean when they saw that the fish had all but gone. I always wanted to have a boat and to go catch some fish for my family. But what really happened, the place has been just fished out like that and hardly catching any fish, and it was real slow. A no fishing zone was established in the bay. A team of 17 fishermen police it day and night. The sanctuary offers time and space to the fish and the coral, breathing room after decades of overfishing and damage. If you are um, running a farm and you're not putting in seedlings, you know what is going to happen to that farm. It's going to run down. 75% um, of world fish population depleted. I understand, so you know, we see the need. From fishing villages to tourist resorts, the balance between capitalizing on the reef now and protecting it for the future is a source of tension. Thousands of tourists coming to the island are one of the dangers to the coral they pay to see. We dive over 100,000 people and everything starts with education about what to do and what not to do when you, when you get next to the reef. You know, touching a piece of coral can actually kill it. People are always going to come and we want them to come, we need them to come. The two have got to find a way to coexist. Losing the reef would be a disaster for Adam Stewart, head of Sandals, the Caribbean's largest resort chain. That's why he's invested in two fishing sanctuaries. Fully blossoming uh, reef system is, is your ideal scenario. You know, that just leads to a whole world of, of opportunity for us as a, a tourism product and then of course certainly as a you know, as a, as, as a local fisherman and the local communities that depend on these reefs to be producing. Back in Orokabesa Bay, the fishermen are learning how to plant coral with Andrew Ross. Many in the scientific community are skeptical they can restore reefs that took thousands of years to develop. Ross admits the project is as fragile as the coral he is trying to save. He needs the support of those who depend on it most. I think the first people you would talk to who understand that the fishery is in trouble, 
It's not the man on the beach. It's certainly not the politician. It's the fisherman. Any fisherman who's been in, on the water more than 20 years know that the coral isn't there. Murray and Stone continue their patrol. In this critical moment, it will take many more like them if the nation's coral is to survive. According to the World Resources Institute, the coral reef contributes roughly $34 million to Jamaica's economy each year. Deterioration of the reef can result in a loss of up to $23 million. In the 1970s, coral coverage throughout the Caribbean stood at 50%. Today, it's down to less than 10%. That brings us to the end of our broadcast this week. We'd love to hear from you about this story and all our stories. Please write to us at an at cctv-america.com. Or you could send us a tweet. Our handle is at CCTV Americas Now. Please join us again next week for another edition of America's Now. See you then. <laughs>